Hi, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made these macrame earrings. So I got the idea to make these from a Pakistani clothing designer whose Instagram handle is Zara Shah Jahan Official. So I follow her on Instagram and she had a recent release, like a new clothing line release. Um, and one of the models who was modeling her clothing was styled with earrings that look like this. I'll put some pictures here. When I came across those earrings, I'm like, whoa, whoa, those are real cute. And I feel like I can make those because I basically make coasters that look like that style anyway. So I should probably be able to make them as earrings. I gave it a go and this is the final look. I reckon that you know, I can wear these with anything really, just depending on the vibe I'm trying to give. If you want to see how I made them and maybe make your own, keep watching. Okay, so this is everything that you'll be needing to make the macrame earrings, starting with macrame rope. I've got three millimeter twisted cotton rope in just the natural color that it comes in, a pair of scissors, and a comb, which we'll be using towards the end, uh, measuring tape as well. We'll also be needing some strong glue. I've got E6000 here, which has a really good hold strength. Um, we'll also be needing some craft earring accessories. So I've got some flat disc earring accessories here. Basically, we'll be sticking the earring that we make onto that flat disc, and the other end is what goes into our ear hole, basically. And this is just the earring backing, which will go into the back of the earring once we've finished it. So that's everything that you'll be needing, and I think we're about ready to get into the process. To begin with, we're going to use our measuring tape, our scissors, and our rope to cut one long piece that is 75 centimeters long as well as five shorter pieces, which are 45 centimeters long each. Now that we have our pieces cut, we are ready to start making our earring. So with the 75 centimeter piece, what we're gonna do is grab one end and create like a circle that overlaps itself. So there's no knots being tied, we're just overlapping it over itself to make a circle. So basically that's all you're gonna need. I'll just do it one more time to show you. Basically what you're gonna need to do is grab the end of the long rope and curl it over itself to make a circle so that the string or rope I mean is overlapping itself and we want a little bit of that rope left on the side. Next we're gonna grab one of our five 45 centimeter pieces and fold them together. So fold the ends of the 45 centimeter rope together and we're going to attach it onto this circle using what's called a reverse lark's head knot. So what you do is you sit it over the two layers of the circle that we made and we're going to grab those two ends and then just pull it through and down. And once we've pull that through and tighten it, that's given us a attached rope. So that's the first one done. I'm just gonna go ahead and do another one. So I've got another 45 centimeter rope with the ends folded together. I'm going to sit them over the two layered circle that we created with the 75 centimeter rope. And I'm just gonna pass them over and then pull them through the itself basically pull it through its own self if that makes sense and that will be the second rope attached so i'm just going to go ahead and attach the other three in the same way Okay, Okay. so now we've mounted the five shorter strings onto the long string. Um, the next step is to pull on the end of the long string, which was on the other side of the circle that we made. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start pulling that. What that will do is make this circle smaller, the circle that we had mounted the five small ropes on. 
it's going to pull all of them together so that they kind of join. So let me just zoom in so you can see better. So I'm just pulling on the long uh, end of the long rope um, until that little string there is basically non-existent and all the five ropes that we mounted are kind of touching. So I'm just going to pull at it and just kind of shift the rope around so it kind of looks like a little star. All five um, mounted ropes have closed into each other, like so. Um, this shorter piece that we had at the end of our circle, we won't be using. Um, we'll just kind of deal with that later, so just ignore that um, for now. But the long piece, which is on the other end of the circle, is what we're going to be using um, to make our earring bigger. We're basically going to be using it and taking it around the earring to, um, I guess, just grow it and build it outwards. So the way that we're going to do this is get one of the short uh, strings um, and attach it onto the long string by doing what is called a double half hitch knot. So what you're going to do is sit the long string over the short string next to it, bring the short string over and under, um, and just kind of pull it in tight. So we're going to do that again. So bring the short string over the long string and tuck it under and through the little hole that we would have made by bringing it over. And we just kind of tighten it and that's one done. So I'm going to go ahead and do the one next to it, the same thing. So the long string is sitting over the short string. I'm getting the short string and putting it over the long one and under then through the hole. Um, just pulling it tight there. And one more time, over and under. Each of these short strings will go over and under twice. Um, so just tighten that one up, bring it close. Now we're just going to move along the circle um, and pick up each string and repeat the knot that we've been doing until we make one full circle. So we've come all the way around once, so I'm just going to grab the next rope and continue growing the circle outwards. So we're just going to loop over and under the long string and then again over and under the long string. So what's going to be different this time is that as this, this uh, shape grows, we will start seeing like a gap between the long string and the next short string that we need to wrap around. So Instead of just pulling it tight, uh, what we need to do is add another string onto the long traveling string. What this will do is close the gap and make sure that our circle stays as flat as possible. If we kept pulling it tight, it would start curving up, which we don't want. So I will show you now how to add another string onto the long string here. So what we're going to do is bring back our trusty macrame rope and the way that I decide what the length of the um, attached string should be is that I look at the string to the right of the long string and I use the macrame rope from the spool and measure out just about twice that length. So you'll just see me doing that here. So I've just measured that out. I'm adding just a little bit more to be on the safe side and then I double it and then just cut it at the end here. So just like we did right at the beginning, we're going to get our piece of rope here, fold it in half, put the two ends together like so, then sit it over the long string that's been traveling around, tuck under the two small pieces over and under and just pull it through like so. So that's another reverse lark's head knot. And as you can see, we've basically closed that gap that we were having 
So now we can go ahead and continue working our way around the circle. Um, so if I just grab the next rope, um, just over and under that long rope and then tuck it in over and under again. Now that that's done, I can see there's another gap that's come up. So I'm just going to repeat what I did, which is getting another piece of rope and just adding it in the same way, which was the reverse lark's head knot. So I'm just measuring against the string next to it, folding it in half and doing the reverse lark's head knot to attach it. As you can see, I've closed the gap again and I'm able to move on to the next string. Um, at this point, it gets a little bit repetitive. We just keep working our way around, adding a new piece of string to the main long rope whenever we see a gap. Um, and we go around to make four total rings all the way around. So I'll just um, speed through this section because like I said, it's pretty repetitive up until we get right near the end. So um, as we get to the fourth or the most outer ring, we'll notice that the rope starts to get quite short, um, but that's not a problem because it's the last time we're going to need to do a knot with it anyway. Um, so don't worry about that too much. It should be enough to get you to the last ring. So we've got one, two, three, and four rings done. So the next step is to go ahead and trim off all this extra length. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my scissors. So this is what we've got so far um, after the first trim. Also, we still have that little string or rope piece left at the back from when we made that circle. So we're just going to go ahead and sort that out. So we're going to split the three stranded rope into two strands and one strand, like as you can see here. Then we're just going to go in for a basic over and under knot like you can see here and just tighten it up like so. And now just to make it extra secure, we're going to pass one of the strands from the two and merge it with the one that was the one initially and then go ahead and repeat the same kind of knot where we go over and under and then just tighten it. Now we're just going to get our scissors and cut really close to the ends of the knot that we just made. So the back is now done. And the next step is to flare out the fringe um, just to get a nicer look. Then once we flare it out, if we want to trim it more, we can do that. And this is where the comb comes in. This is honestly probably my favorite part because it's just so fun. So all we do is just start combing at the fringe basically and just keep at it until it gets all floofy and nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. So now that I've brushed it out a bit, I can tell it's definitely uneven and I don't want the fringe to be this long. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it again. So you may have noticed we didn't actually do anything with the traveling rope at the end. We don't actually need to, we can just tuck it behind the rope next to it and it shouldn't unravel. I'm basically done. Um, I can obviously go in and trim more in the future if I need to, but I'm just gonna quit while I'm ahead now before I go too far. So we're going to turn the piece over and grab those little earring craft accessories that we got from the craft store. Right now we're just going to need the flat disc piece, uh, which we're gonna use with the E6000 glue to basically glue it onto the back of the earring that we just made. 
also um, just with the piece by itself you can choose to put it into a book or like sit a big heavy book on top of it just to flatten it down a bit more if you like um, I've just been kind of pressing it down as I've been making it but if that's something you want to do you can always just sit a book on top or put it into a heavy book if you want to flatten it out more but moving on so we have our little flat disc earring piece and we've got our glue the aim is to put some glue onto that flat disc surface and then put some glue also onto the surface that we're sticking the flat disc onto so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that as you can see I've put a dollop of glue onto the flat disc and now I'm going to be putting a little bit of glue onto the back of the earring that we've just made as you can see I've got some glue on the, that surface of the earring and the flat disc and the idea now is just to press the two together um, in terms of where I'm placing it I'm just placing it right at the top of the fourth ring um, as long as both earrings you have placed at the same place it shouldn't matter too much but I think it looks best if the um, flat disc piece goes near the top of the back of the earring which is right at the edge of where the fourth ring ends so now we basically just uh, leave it aside to dry. Um, according to the instructions of the E6000 glue, you need to let it rest and cure for about 24 hours at least, um, 24 to 72 hours. 72 hours is the time it says um, it'll take you to get the maximum bond strength, I think. So um, just leave it to the side to let it stick down proper. Don't do what I did, which is wait two minutes and then try it straight away expecting that it was stuck. Basically everything that we've done now we want to do it twice, um, leave them to the side to dry, and you'll end up with two completed earrings. So here we have the two finished pieces, this is just what the back looks like, and the front um, is basically as we made it. So pretty cute I reckon if I do say so myself. And you'll notice that I've also already popped on the earring backing. And I found that the glue strength is quite good anytime I push the backing in to the flat disc or remove it, um, it hasn't actually pulled the disc off. So to me, that's a pretty decently strong glue. That about uh, wraps up the process. And one more time, this is the final product. And basically that's how you do it. So it's not, it's not too hard once you get the hang of the each knot, it gets a bit repetitive. So once you've gotten the hang of it, it's um, not actually too difficult. It just takes a little bit of time and then you're good. So if you uh, want to try this out or plan on trying to make these, let me know in the comments. If you upload a picture of yourself wearing them on Instagram, maybe tag me, that would be cool. Love to see it. So if you like this video, please press like. And if you want to see more craft, singing or lifestyle videos um subscribe if you want and uh that's about it okay bye